Hello, Jenny Hall here for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'd like to share how I create a custom cutaway edge to a card project. I'm stamping with the Spring Blo Blossoms stamp set and the Spring stamp set, and I will be stamping with the Fade Out ink from Ink on 3. I've already cut a few masks out of some masking paper and I will use those to place on top of the images that I would like to have appear on the front of the design. Anything I stamp over the masked area will appear as background. So I'll start out by stamping onto a piece of watercolor paper with the Ink on 3 Fade Out ink and I like to give it two or three stamps to really be able to see that ink. If you want a lighter fade out ink color, then just use one application. But I like to be able to see it well enough through my eyeglasses that I give a couple of layers of ink. So as you can see, I first stamp the image, then place the mask directly over the image. When the mask is cut, I like to cut it directly on the stamped lines. So using a coordinating die is not going to work if you want to not have there be a halo effect. So this is going to be the best way to get that nice crisp look from a masked image. So I'm adding a few individual stamps. And the one thing that I would like to stress in this design is that we need to have the images go from the left to the right and come right up or over the outside edge of the piece of watercolor paper. That means that the leaf that is stamped on the left hand side needs to go right up to that left hand edge and vice versa on the right hand side. That's going to help the design actually cut away very easily and it looks more natural. So I'm adding a few more of the images and I'm leaving those two large flowers masked because those are what is going to appear in the front. Everything else stamped over the mask appears in the background and you can see here that it works like a charm. So I'm using the Karen Brush Marker Pro markers to do the coloring today. And this is a new product for me and it is carried in the Honey Bee Stamps shop. You can get the markers individually and I'm not sure if the blender pen is covered. Um, here is what it looks like to use the blender pen. I tried it, but I have to say that I really like the old water brush or a wet paintbrush much better in order to spread out the color. So there are many ways to use the Karen brush markers and one way is to use them direct to paper as I'm doing here or you can scribble them on a non-porous surface and pick it up with a wet brush and apply it to the paper. I find that the markers like to blend out for me better when I use a dark color and then use a lighter color in that same color family to bring the color out into the rest of the paper. Much like how I like to use Copic markers by sticking to say a dark brown, blend that with a medium brown, and then bring that further out with a light brown. I tried to pick pinks from my marker set and I found that I had um, a medium shade of pink, a light pink, and then I chose to go with a color called almond in order to bring my lightest color as this is going to have a little bit more of a yellowish tone. I wanted this to really evoke springtime and since this video is going to be published on Easter Sunday, I thought this would be a nice way for me to say Happy Easter to everybody and send Easter blessings. So I'm going to color all of the images in pretty much the same fashion. 
first adding in that dark shade into the most shadowed area of the flower petal or leaf. Bring that out with the medium shade and then add that third lightest shade and then just kind of swish it around with my wet paintbrush. And that is enough to be able to get me the nice look that I'm looking for. One thing I would like to mention about these markers is they are very juicy and they do carry a lot of pigment. So you can see here when I put the color down, it's really adding a good amount of color down to the area. The one drawback that I have found so far is if I'm using a dark shade, such as this, uh, this darker pink here, then it leaves a little bit of a line behind. And if you're picky about your no line coloring, then it can be something that maybe is distracting. So that would be an instance that I would suggest that you scribble the marker onto a paint, um, paint palette or like onto the work surface that I'm working on here and just use your wet brush in order to bring the color to the paper. Now I'm going to use two different yellows in order to paint the center of the flowers. And if you notice the way that the color reacts to the stamped images, that's the ink on three fade out ink. They kind of, those stamped lines pick up any of the pigment and make it much darker. It kind of stands out. And I, um, I kind of like that, and then in some ways I don't. It works really good with other coloring tools, and I'm just not sure if I like it with the Karen brushes yet. So let's, moving on, I'm creating a background for the top portion of the design because the bottom portion is going to be cut away. So I'm giving some kind of atmosphere to it. And by wetting the background, then when I touch the gray marker down to that area, it pulls it away immediately and then it stops at a certain point. And that's what's different about some other watercolor pans or traditional watercolors is that they will keep on spreading out, but the Karen markers only went so far. That's one difference I could see, but they're still fun to play with. So I added some grays and blues up to the top of those florals just to give a, a sense of background. And then I felt like I needed to have a bit more of a smooth transition where those stamped lines are really holding on to the pigment. So I brought in my Prismacolor colored pencils. As I often do when coloring, I do, will do watercolor and then I'll do color pencil right on top of it to bring in more details. A sharpened colored pencil can get me so much more detail than a Copic marker or, or a watercolor brush. So I oftentimes will rely on my colored pencils. The way that I like to apply them is to use the, the blending tone, and that would be the, the dark pink. And then I used a medium tone to kind of crush that color down into the watercolor paper and then bring it out further into the petals. And then I used the white on top of that to crush all those colors together. And I use the word crush because I'm using a lot of pressure and that's going to make those colored pencils blend in the paper. And then they will lay flat and become part of, of the card front. They will become part of the paper. I won't be able to scratch them away or anything. And they won't look grainy either. It, they will look really smooth. So maybe smoothing it out is a better term instead of crushing it. <laughs> so I went back over where those little um, lines were in the design that the color pencil covered up with a gray marker. And then I'm using now a white gel pen to hit onto the very tips of those gray lines. And then I also added some dots down onto the yellow section as well. So the cutaway area is custom in the way that 
I have just added the stamp design and just added the florals from left to right as long as I bring them all the way to the edge of the paper then it looks natural but if I had not then it would be like the florals were hanging in midair. So if you want to try this design, and I really hope you do, then just make sure that your flowers or whatever it is you're using your stamped image, make sure it goes all the way to the edge from left to right. This is a really fun way to make a Christmas card too with some pretty Christmas designs. I thought I would add a piece of pattern paper um, to the design and I'm using the log cabin paper pad from Honeybee Stamps and I'm cutting it down to the width of my card which is four and a half and then trimmed a little bit of it off the top because I don't need the whole thing there. And now I'm lining up a sentiment that is from the spring stamp set and I'm going to stamp that directly onto the pattern paper section with some VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink. That's a black permanent ink and it always gives a nice crisp look. So I'm going to now attach everything to the card base and this is an A2 sized four and a quarter by five and a half. Attach the pattern paper with some tape runner and now that top piece is going to go on with some double-sided foam adhesive. And then I will use some liquid glue. And these are the Moonlight Rhinestones. They're one of my favorites from Honey Bee Shop. And most of the products that I've used today are from the Honey Bee Shop. Whether it's a Honey Bee licensed product or not, I would urge you to check it out and see if they have something that I even buy my Nina solar white paper from Honeybee. I'd love to be able to just toss it into an order because I know that Honeybee carries it. It's amazing <laughs> to be able to just know it's there. I hope you enjoyed this design and I hope you enjoyed my review of the Karen brushed markers. If I can answer any questions for you, I'd be happy to do so. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.